Hi, it's Mark. Ben. I'm Chad. From the Foodists, we're going prawning. Spot That's prawning. Spot prawn boat right there. Yeah. I'm already seasick. We're leaving now. Let's go. Let's pull off those crustaceans. Today we're prawning. Somewhere. Somewhere. Spot prawning specifically. Somewhere. The house sound. Somewhere, somewhere house sound. Is it? It's a secret. We have no idea. We've been blindfolded to this point. Yeah, we don't know where we are. But we're motoring fast, that's why it's so noisy. Traps have been soaking for how long are the traps been down? 24 hours of soaking time for both of these guys and the prawns. We're on our way to the uh, prawning ground, full speed. That way. Somewhere. That, that way. way. Over there. That's a fisherman secret. Oh, is it? That's one thing you never ask a fisherman is how oh. much do you catch and where do you catch it? Because the chances are yeah. I will lie to you when I tell you. It's a big ocean down here. The prawns do not live everywhere. You gotta try to pinpoint where you set this gear. If you're off by a few yards or so, you're going to get nothing. So what Steve's going to do, he's going to look at the bottom of the ocean with our depth sounder. He's going to look for a very thick bottom where it's all reefs and rocks. That's where the prawns live. And uh, when he gives us a signal, we're going to shoot out the line. And once we get to the uh, start of the traps, we're going to be plunking it back in the water. And hopefully they land in the, in the honey hole. Bait goes into the cup. It's, a, it's compressed tuna, fish yep. oil. Now the prawns crawl into the trap. They can't get out once they're in, but they actually can feed in the air in, in, through the trap. They put their little uh, antenna spike mouth thing into the uh, into the bait, and uh, and they feed. And while they're in there, eating the entire time until they get pulled up, and then we eat them. Now we're about to set the traps. Actually, not us. So what we're doing, we're throwing down the pots. There are three strings. There are 50 pots per string, 70 feet between each pot. Uh, we're out in house sound somewhere. We don't even, I've never been here before. These guys are blindfolded us and we're sitting floating out here. Uh, and there's, we've got, this is the first one done and we've got two more to go. The spot prawn is usually at about 300 uh, feet below the water. Totally pristine, clean, clear water. It's a sustainable wild fishery. Uh, most of the time that you have a prawn, it's a tiger prawn. It's from, uh, from Thailand or somewhere like that. They're farmed, they're raised in tiny little shallow pools of cess and uh, they don't taste like a spot prawn, I can assure you of that. Alright, we're just going to pick up the first plot. We're in about, uh, about 50 fathoms of water right now, 300 feet. Almost our first spring of the day. We're going to have a look what's here. Nice, nice brownies. Know that prawns are actually born male and in their fourth year spontaneously change to female to procreate. Right now, we just got handed fresh live spot prawns direct from our house right sound. out of the water, right out of the first trap. We just sucked the heads. Yeah. We're just peeling these things. It's still pulsing. I'm gonna put this into my mouth now and give Good it morning. a shot. Cheers. <laughs> oh, oh my God! You hear? You hear about the candy? and the, um, the flavor and taste on these things. And until you've actually done this, oh, nothing like it. Interestingly, there's actually seven commercially available prawn species in British Columbia. Spot prawns are both the largest and the most sustainable species for a number of reasons, which is awesome. And one of the keys of spot prawn fisheries is the fact that the uh, bycatch is minimal. And bycatch, like this guy, snow crab, uh, you can just put it right back. And the, the, these spot prawns are four years old, uh, which means that any, any previous year are too small and they actually fit right back into the trap again and they're released. That's an egg case for a skate. It's a great example of how you can uh, control bycatch in the prawn fishery, because uh, this can go right back down instead of getting killed in a drag fishery. So this also has a, it's a great statement. It's actually really soft. Great statement to the, uh, the health of the ecosystem around here. And I've never seen this before. I wonder if it'd be good with bacon. Oh, oh, Everything, everything's good. Everything's good bacon. Bacon. Just, or you can just put this on the plate and eat the bacon. Right. Now the name of the spot prawn is pretty obvious. They have spots on them. Um, the spots are on the first and the fifth carapace. And uh, if you notice, the shape of the head here is exactly the same as uh, Captain Nemo's Nautilus. Part one. Head, Fast. body, Trap, trap no. Oh, I'm good. 
I don't think I'm cooking another spot front ever. Now, if you're at home and you're doing that, one of the things that you can do, you don't throw anything away. You save the shells, you can make a beautiful stock out of it. Um, actually, uh, Never so, um, always cook with the heads too. The, uh, the, the, uh, the shells and the heads can be made into, you can do an oil infusion. They're just piling them on the deck now. Always work. There's never a break. These guys did not stop the entire time we were out. They also didn't make us work, which is very nice. Thank you. No worries. Steve, why do you do it? Well, Frank and I have been fishing all our lives, and uh, we continue to fish. We love to fish, and we really love spot farming because it's turned into such a such a great story when it comes to the world of sustainability. And you guys sell directly to the restaurants. There's no middleman with your operation. Straight to the restaurants. Yeah. These prawns we caught this morning will be in the kitchens all throughout Vancouver in the next couple of hours. The spot prawns, especially here in Vancouver, has become the darling of sustainability. We're proud to be part of it. And let's keep these prawns at home. That's yeah. where they belong. And the rest of the world can eat their own Asian farm tiger prawns. The restaurants have access to this amazing product. What about, you know, people at home? The home chef who wants where, Where's the best place you, you would send them to buy this? Well, we sell to what we call the civilians also. I mean, we come in every day at 1 o'clock. I mean, sometimes we don't have any. We've got a busy restaurant day. For the most part, we do. We come in every day at 1 o'clock, seven days a week for all of May, all of June. But see you anyway if you're down there and you've got something on your boat to sell. Yeah, Delicious. we're down there 12 months a year, and it's a great place to hang out. Well, thanks a lot, Steve. No worries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're just off the boat. We just got back, and uh, we ate lots of raw prawns uh, on the water, but now we're going to try some in the pan with some uh, garlic and lemongrass and butter and wine. These are super fresh. They're still squirming. They're still, still alive. squirming. It's a sustainable fishery, not because uh, it's right here in our backyard, but because um, these prawns are pro prolific. Uh, they are not ca caught with bycatch, anything that's... Uh, that's caught, that's not uh, harvestable, goes right back in the ocean. Are these done? They're done. Oh, yeah. oh, look at that. Can't wait to taste those. That was delicious. It's the, it's the brine combined with the, the, the flavors of the, of the garlic and... Succulent. The texture's amazing. From somewhere in Vancouver, this is Ben from Foodists. I'm Chad. And I'm Mark. And we're spot prawning. Spot prawning. Prawning. Spot prawn. Spot prawn. Spot prawn. Spot prawns are more like this, though. Mark. <laughs> I thought we were doing pots prawns. The prawn broker. Like, where did they put all the stereos and TVs on the boat? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.